All right, here we are. We are in chapter six still, still rational numbers. And today what we are going to be getting into is we want to be getting into adding, subtracting, and we may do a little estimation. I don't know if we're going to do a whole lot of estimation of rational numbers. Um, I'm a big fan of more of an exact. I think we can be more exact with most of these. Um, now, rational numbers. Remember, we talked about rational numbers are fractions, okay? Um, improper, proper fractions. We're going to basically be talking about um, that both we have to be able to use improper and proper fractions. So if we start with just taking a regular addition, and this is what's known as your area model. This first circle is two fifths to shade it. Okay, second one is one fifth. Okay, and if we put those together, because they have the same number of pieces in them, five each, we can put all three together and we get three shades or three out of five. Okay, nice little area. Um, we also have the number line model. Okay, the number line model. Okay, if I want to add two fifths and a fifth, okay, we start at zero like always. We take two fifths, so we go to the right to two fifths, and we want to add another one fifth, which gets us to three fifths. Okay, so we have two different rules. One, we're going to have a rule that deals with rational numbers where we have like denominators. Remember, the denominators are the bottom number. Okay, and the rule is simple in rational numbers. Okay, we can add rational numbers with like denominators by just adding the top values and keeping the bottom denominator. And then we would have to reduce if necessary. Okay, um, in this, you know, if we do not have like denominators, okay, if your denominators are different, like A, B, and C over D here, okay, and they have a misprint here and that little typo, this should be a D right there. Okay, whoops, I clicked the wrong thing. So if their denominators are different, you're gonna have to get a common denominator first, and then you can add them together, okay? Well, by common denominator, if I have a denominator is B and D, the common denominator would be BD, which means the first fraction would have to be multiplied by D top and bottom. The second one has to be multiplied by B top and bottom. And then we can add them together. So just here, here's, here's a thing in thirds and here's the thing in fourths in the area model. Well, they don't have the same size, okay? So, the common denominator between three and four is going to be 12. So we'd actually have to break these up into 12 equal pieces. Once Now, this 12 equal pieces would mean that there are A of the 12 are shaded here and three of the 12 are shaded here. So we would change the denominators, multiplying the first one by four and the second one by three, and we would get Eight twelfths plus three twelfths, which is eleven twelfths, and there's your final shade of that. Okay, so easiest thing to do on these, okay, is get a common denominator. Okay, so if we look, common denominators here would be, I'd have to multiply, and really, let me show you a little bit better way of doing these. Your common denominator of fifteen and twelve. Well. 15 is 3 times 5. 21 is 3 times 7. Okay, so they both have a 3 in common. Okay, I don't care about those. They're in common. But this one has a 5 and this one has a 7. So this one has to be multiplied by 7, top and bottom. The second one has to be multiplied by five top and bottom which then gives us let's see here if I can get this hundred and five and on the bottom fourteen over hundred and five plus twenty over hundred and five which gives us a total of thirty four over hundred and five. Okay same thing here on B here 
I'd have to multiply the first fraction by five, the second one by three. They did a negative three, because I would need to be negative 15 on the bottom. So I'd get 10 over negative 15 plus negative three over negative 15, which is seven over negative 15, or the um, negative seven over 15. Get rid of these. Shows an easy way to raise. All right. Now, example here of six, okay? They're going to show it in a certain way. I, because addition is commutative, I can, you can go ahead and get all of these to be the same. What they do in their example here is they get a common denominator of the parentheses, order of operations, which would be 20. So I get 15 over 20 plus 4 over 20 because we're multiplied by 4. Um, four is here and five is here. Add those up, that's going to be 19 over 20 plus 1, 6, which means now you need a common denominator between 20 and 6, which if I multiply this one by 3, this one by 10, we get a common denominator of 60. So we get 57 over uh, 60 plus 10 over 60, which is 67 over 60 which then you would see if it reduces. That one does not reduce, okay? So if we look at D, common denominator would be x, y, which means you have to multiply the first one by y and the second one by x. And now when we see this, remember when we add, we're gonna keep the denominator. So the denominator is gonna have an x, y on the bottom and add the three y plus four x. And this is reduced, that will not reduce any farther. So, look at E real quick, okay? I want you to pause the tape for a second and see if you can figure out your common denominator. All right, so common denominator. Well, notice there's two A's here and there's only one A here. What, two B's here, one B here. So they both need to have two A's and they both need to have two B's. So, to get this one to have two B's, you have to multiply top and bottom by B, and get this one to have an A, top and bottom, you get the two A's, and then you can add them together. And notice there's nothing in common here that I can factor out, so that is reduced. All right, so what happens if we get a mixed fraction? Now, you guys will probably deal with some mixed fractions in the younger levels. I don't deal with mixed fractions a lot. You get to a certain age in math, you don't do many mixed fractions, but you can, say if you wanna add, there's ways of adding, subtracting with mixed fractions, okay? Um, but um, I tend to not wanna use them too often, but mixed numbers is a number that's made up of an integer and a fraction, okay? The mixed number is also a rational number, therefore it can be written in the form A over B. Okay, now when we talk about mixed fractions, we're talking about things like this. Okay, now you can add, now where do you use these? You know, cooking, uh, measuring sometimes, those kind of things that you might have to use mixed fractions on. Okay, but when we add and subtract, it's a whole lot easier to deal with them as an improper fraction. Okay, so what we want to do here is it says change each of the mixed fractions into a rational number. A rational number can only have two numbers, an A and a B. So to do that, the first things first, it says four and one third is the same as four plus one third, which would be four plus one third, which when you get a common denominator, you have to multiply three. Okay, and you get 13 over three. Now, if you remember, there was a little shortcut that you might have learned in uh, school that you dealt with. You would multiply those two, 12 plus the one, which would give me my 13 over that denominator. 
So if you look at this, we multiply these two. Now, what do you do with the, the negative? The answer is gonna be negative. So don't think about the negative yet. Three times five is 15 plus two would be 17 over five and a negative out in front, okay? And that's how we wanna deal, you know, that's one of the easier ways of dealing with it. This is how they did it, take a common denominator. Again, I think a lot tougher. And there's your negative 17 over three, okay? So I want you to try this one. Okay, they want us to change it to a, a mixed number. So we're gonna do the opposite here. Okay, we're actually gonna see how many times does five go into 29? Five into 29 would go five times with a four left over. That's that remainder. And one of the things we teach later in long division and bigger math is this is going to be five with a remainder of four over five. That's one of the easier ways of doing that. All right, so let's see what they did. Okay. Whoops, sorry about that. Okay. So, Again, they do some of all, that's all the mathematical way of doing some things, but you have to break up in groups of five. A lot more complicated, I would think. All right, so properties, okay? Additive inverse, okay? The additive inverse is if I take a rational number and add its opposite, you're gonna always get zero. One half plus a negative one half is zero, okay? Uh, properties of additive inverse for rational numbers are allegorious to those of additive inverse of integers. In other words, uh, two negatives, a negative times another negative is positive, same thing with rational. If I distribute a negative, you'll get it, the terms are opposites. If I distribute a negative here, your terms are still opposite, so they work the same way. Um, the addition property of equality. If I have two rational numbers that are equal and I add the same rational numbers to both sides, the rational number stays the same. Okay. Uh, subtraction. So let's get to subtraction. Well, the rules for subtraction are basically the same thing. Okay. If we're going to subtract rational numbers, you would still need to have a common denominator. Okay. Um, you can also look at it as a rational number minus another rational number is the same as a rational number plus the opposite of a rational number, okay? But you would still need a common denominator to do that. So let's look at a problem here. 5 eighths minus 1 fourth. Again, you still have to have a common denominator. Between 8 and 4 would be, common denominator would be, a, so I'd have to multiply top and bottom by two, okay? Which would give us five eighths minus two eighths, which when we subtract, you can still keep your denominator eight, subtract to get a three and make sure it doesn't reduce, which this does not reduce, okay? So now let's look at the second one. To be able, easiest way to do this is go ahead and change them to improper which if you remember the trick, five times three, 15 plus one is 16. So this is gonna be 16 over three minus, multiply that together, that's eight, 11, 11 over four. So now what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to have some sort of common denominator. Well, common denominator between three and Four would be 12, which means this has to be multiplied by four. This has to be multiplied by three. 
right? Which would give me 64 over 12 minus 33 over 12. When I subtract that, that's going to be 31 over 12, which does not reduce. And so we get 31 over 12, which if you want it back in mixed fraction, you change it back. 12 goes into 31 two times with seven left over. And so any of those do work, any of those methods you want to be able to use. Of course, it's good to know all of them. I don't know if I would use this method that they have, just because to me that's a lot more work of trying to find things that you need to have. All right. So what about if I have letters though? Okay. Well, you still have to get a common denominator. Not a common numerator, but a common denominator. Between two and three would be six. So I have to multiply top and bottom by both six, or by two. This one by three, this one by two. Now they do it a little differently. Can I take a shortcut? This would become now two six x, and this would become three, or this would be two x, and this would be three x, which adds up to five x over six, which is reduced. Okay, so let's now look at this one. How would I find common denominator? Well, this one has a two, this one does not. So this one needs a two. Now this has an x and this has an x squared, which means this one needs another x. So my LCD, if I do it like they did up here, two x squared, this is going to be 2x minus 1. And if that's all I've done, then guess what? That should be my answer. There it is. What I did in one step kind of didn't. Three. Okay. Then you have your estimate. The estimate plays an important role in judging reasonableness. In sixth grade classes, collecting cans to take to the recycling center. Becky's group brought the following amounts in pounds. About how many pounds does her group have all together? All right, so you're probably estimating these. Okay, uh, so it's use front end estimation and adjust to using zero, a half, and one. This would be close to one. This would be close to what, three and a half? This would be close to six. This is a half. So one, three and a half. Here's another half. That's four, five, 11. And then they got nine. So very close. Okay. That's how I did my belt. This is the front end estimation gives you nine. We did the adjustment estimate, which is 11. Okay. And I'm not going to be too worried about those. I'll let you look at those and how they adjusted those. Okay. So that is the end of six point one or two, excuse me.